Amen. Appreciate the mercies of the Lord this morning. Amen. Aren't you thankful? Amen. For God's grace and His mercy. And I've always loved that song. I believe it fits any time of the year. Amen. I believe it makes, it should make, amen, our hearts want to serve the Lord. Amen. I think about it. Amen. I began to think about it and I heard, I was actually talking to Sister Louise yesterday in the hospital and she was in there and was talking to her about something I read in a devotion yesterday. And if you have your Bibles, we'll turn this over to the book of Luke, chapter number 18. And while you're turning there, I'll finish my story. Amen. But nonetheless, Luke, chapter number 18. Amen. I was, I remember, amen, reading in this article, amen, talking about Christ and talking about the night. Brother Stephen, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was praying, amen, and Soldiers come to take him, Judas, to betray him with a kiss. And he, man, he asked those soldiers there before they bound him up. His disciples that were with him were stirred. They were awakened because of the turmoil, the chaos that was taking place. Here their Savior picks to be arrested and taken off for trial. And he man, not really knowing what all was going to take place, Sister Jolly, he man, they were concerned. We know what Peter did. He tried to, he man, fight back, if you will. Christ had told him not the sword. He man, don't, don't let that be the case tonight, he man. But he went willingly, but he said something very profoundly into those soldiers. He man, he said, can these go free? He man, let these go. In other words, even in his deepest moment of pain, Sister Kathy, he was still concerned about his disciples. Amen. amen. And it's amazing to me, amen, how oftentimes we forget that, amen, that Christ was concerned even in his lowest moment, knowing, Brother Don, what he was fixing to have to face, he amen. still, amen, amen, was concerned about his amen. disciples. Amen. amen. That should do our hearts some good That's right. this morning. Amen. amen. Y'all not going to sleep on me this morning. <laughs> no, sir. It is Easter. I know it don't feel like it outside. Even the rain, I don't know, maybe the weather's got you down and discouraged. Amen. But we are Pentecostal this morning. I'm very silent about that. Amen. Amen. Let's just look with us over the book of Luke, chapter number 18. I'm going to begin a reading with verse number 34. Actually, we'll begin reading with verse number 31. Amen. Luke chapter number 18, verse number 31. Such a privilege once again to have each and every one with us in the house of the Lord this morning. Good to have, amen, all of our visitors with us. So glad you could be with us. Got several of our home folks out today. Amen. Not able to be in the house of the Lord, but it's, I'm so glad you chose to be with us amen. in God's house. Just asking the Lord to help us, amen, and minister, amen. Luke chapter number 18, verse number 31. If you have it, would you say amen? Amen. amen. If you don't have your Bible, just look at your neighbors. Amen. They'll share with you, I'm sure. Right. Amen. Such a privilege to be here today. Luke chapter 18, verse 31. Then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem. And all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. Amen. They shall be accomplished. That's right. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles and shall be mocked. Spitefully entreated and spit it on. And they shall scourge him and put him to death. And the third day he shall rise again. Amen. Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen? Amen. But listen, verse number 34. And that's where I want us to focus on this morning. And they understood none of these things. And this saying was hid from them, neither knew they the things which were spoken. Amen. 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 How startling, Sister, that is that this morning. Yes. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. May God add His blessings upon His word. Appreciate Amen. the mercies of the Lord. Amen. This morning. Amen. Won't you, if the Lord will help me, he can preach on a simple fall. Amen. Do you understand? 
Do you yeah, understand? On. Amen. I began to marvel when I read this scripture. My wife was telling me this morning she is one of those people that just love, amen, any types of holidays, Sister Ann. She just loves, amen. I, I think she, it, it, Valentine's Day, Easter, uh, President's Day, whatever it might be, she thinks <laughs> there has to be some sort of uh, candy or gift given to the children at those times. I don't understand it. I, I never, to me, it doesn't bother me. I, we don't celebrate every holiday. Not that I'm against that, amen, but if it wasn't for their mother, their, my children wouldn't have much fun in life, amen, that's just the truth of the matter, daddy's not fun at all, amen, I'm a born individual, I don't like doing things, but this morning she told me before we gave the kids their little Easter baskets and all the chocolate, and I, that's something else that I don't understand, why in the world she'd give them such sugar and sweets all the time, amen, when they have to go home with us, I, I just don't get that, but nonetheless, amen, she choose to, but she made me tell them, or she wanted me to make sure we do it on Christmas, Sister Dolly, we do it every holiday, just about, amen, we go through the significance of the day, amen, it's not about the gifts, or it's not about the chocolate or the candies, but she wants me to oh. reiterate to them the reality behind why it is amen. that we celebrate these days, yeah. and I began to think about that, that's so, amen, the way we are sometimes, amen, I don't know say, Brother Thomas, I, I've been here for a few months, I guess, amen, you could say, so I'm still getting to know, amen, some of you, some of your family, some of the ones that are visiting me this time, maybe for the first time, never met you before, but glad to have you this morning, but I'm just now getting to understand some of the things here, I don't know who's occasionally been to church before, it seems to be that some folks, amen, only come to church on two times a year, amen, hey, they only come on Easter and on Christmas. Christmas most of the times, or maybe Mother's Day or Father's Day, if they're connected to that parent a little more, amen. And that's not a gripe or a slam against the individuals, amen, visiting with us today, amen. It's just a common prayer all across this country, amen, that men and women visit, amen, the house of the Lord on these times and these occasions to be in service, amen. Some, like Sister Patty said, visit with family members, amen, when they normally would attend another particular church, amen. And if that's the case, amen, I'm so glad you chose to come be with us today. But nonetheless, Yes, amen. I began to think about that, Sister Kathy. Even the reality is, over and over, many of us this morning have heard countless times the story of Easter and the death, the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We talked about it. We've probably been to a sunrise service at least one time in our life. Amen. Many of us have probably been in church or around church for quite a bit of time. And Sister Heather, we've heard, amen, time and time again, all about these stories and all about what Christ went through and what he suffered and how he, how he endured the pain and the agony and the suffering that he was exposed to all for you and for me. Amen. All for the souls of fallen man. He didn't go through those things because he thought it was in his best interest. He went through everything that he went through. Amen. So that you and I might find redemption for our times, one of our, uh, many of us, over the course of time, we've heard that story time and time again. We've heard that story countless occasions, countless times, but like we've heard it until we're tired of hearing it almost so much that it becomes kind of boring. Come on. I'll go to church today and I'm sure somebody's going to preach about this because we know that this is the day that we commemorate or we talk about or we celebrate or we remember, amen, this instance, this occasion. These are the times, these are the moments. And Sister Mary, many folks this morning, amen, come knowing exactly what they would hear about a resurrected Savior, right. amen. Had a guy ask me the other day, Sister Ned, if I was working with this individual, he's not a Christian and I'm not sure what he is, but I'll just leave that there. 
Amen. But it was working. And then he asked. We were listening to some. Uh, he brings the radio and it's telling a story. And on this particular broadcast, there was someone talking about uh, the resurrection of Christ. And it was talking about the story of Easter, if you will. Amen. And he stopped for a moment and he looked at me and said, Do you believe that he really rose from the dead? <coughs> Do you believe that? I told him, given the case of my occupation, that if I did not believe it, that would be a dangerous place. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It would be dangerous. <laughs> Amen. And I found an opportunity, Brother John, to speak to this man for just a moment. Amen. On what I believe. Amen. Why I believe. Amen. I took him back to Genesis. And I said to him, Amen. It's amazing to me. If we struggle with that portion, Amen. There's one portion in the Bible that can clear it all up. It's the first thing that we read open in the book of I mean, the Word of God. It's the first line. The first verse. If you have problems with that, then you're probably going to have an issue with the rest of the book. Because in Genesis 1 and 1, the very first portion says, In the beginning, God. And that's as simple as Amen. it gets. Come on. And Brother Caleb, if you can believe that portion of Scripture, if you can get your mind around that the earth was formless and void, that it was empty and barren, God said, let there be light. Amen. If you can believe that this morning, even then the rest of the book, the story will begin to unfold and make sense. But if you can't come, amen, to terms with that portion, then no wonder they can't believe in a virgin birth. No wonder they can't believe, amen, that there was, amen, a man by the name of Lazarus, amen, who was dead in a tomb somewhere, amen, four days he lay there. Four days. Simple 
life to the matter is, sister, I did a whole lot worse off, and my heart locked. I've been given the cross. I'd be down in a ditch somewhere, no telling what's going on, had not Jesus Christ, the risen Savior, even spoke to this soul and said, Come and follow me, and I'll give you life. Amen. I'd be a lot worse off had it not been that fact. Amen. Praise God. And so you dispute how you want to, believe how you will. Amen. But you won't change my mind. Amen. Amen. Because I've experienced something on a personal Amen. level. Amen. But this gentleman would refer to me and talk, Sister Sarah, about how he enjoyed this and he would read that. I told him simply, you'll never grasp the reality of the Bible until you understand that it's a spiritual book. You can read the words, you can find the, term, the terminology, the definitions. You can hear it plainly spoken, but until something inside, spiritual understanding Amen. becomes awakened, Amen. it doesn't matter. Right. You say, Brother Mitchell, I don't agree with that theology. Well, let me give you these examples, if you will. Amen. Listen, what I read to you here, Jesus again foretells his death. This, I believe, Sister Anne, was the third time that Christ had told his disciples what was going to take place when he entered into Jerusalem. You see, to many people, they don't understand that concept that Christ knew full well that he was going to have to die. Right. The Bible declares in Revelation chapter number 13, amen, that before the foundation of the world, the Lamb of God was slain. Right. Oh, let me try. what sense does that make? Why would God go through all of this? Why would God do that? Amen. Why would God allow Christ to suffer that way? Because it was the only way to bring salvation for right. all. Yeah. Complete restoration. To all. Amen. That was Holy Ghost this morning. Amen. There's so much more you could go into detail, but listen. Amen. Christ full well knew him. He had spoke on occasion to his disciples. The men that followed him for three and a half years, so to speak, and around that ballpark, about three, three and a half years, they had followed Christ. He had told them on occasion. Matter of fact, we find revealed in other portions of Scripture where Peter, knowing full well who he was, amen, uh, he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus looked at him and simply said, That flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you, but my Father, even by his Spirit, these things he spoke to him, even not to natural eyes, even but he saw Christ for who he truly was. Amen. Amen. But still, at this time, the disciples hear once again that Christ would go unto Jerusalem and all things that were written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. Uh -huh. Now for me and you this morning, that May not make as much sense, Brother Brown, but the reality is for those young Jewish boys, they knew. Because they were taught very early about the laws of God. They were taught very early about the Scriptures, the Old Testament, the Torah. They were taught. They were instructed. They went to their curriculum on a daily basis. It wasn't about science and it wasn't about... Uh, technology. It wasn't somebody giving them an iPad and a computer and making them sit in the corner and learn something. They even had fun. But they were instructed on the daily basis at their institutions of learning about the Word of God. They knew full well what was spoken. Even a matter of fact, you see this example. Amen. Whenever Nathan, amen. I believe one of the one of the disciples, amen, not Nathan, but one of the disciples came. And was telling another Nathaniel, that's what it was, amen, was telling him about Christ. And he says, come see him, amen, the one that they spoke of, the Messiah, come and see him, amen, come and find him. They had looked for him, amen, the one that John the Baptist talked about, amen, he said, behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. This was the Christ that was revealed. And yet, the sad portion, Brother Patrick, of Scripture is knowing all of these things at a very young age 
when Christ began to speak to them, he said, the Son of Man shall go to Jerusalem. Okay. And all things that are written of him by the prophets shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles. And he shall be mocked and spitefully entreated and spit it on. And they shall scourge him and put him to death. Amen. And the third day he shall rise again. Amen. Amen. Can anybody else pick up on the certainty in his voice? Amen. And the words that are spoken, not of a maybe so, hope so, but a certainty. Come on. In verse number 34, the shocking revelation is they understood none of these things. They didn't understand it. They didn't comprehend it. It's kind of like talking to a child. But you know, nobody else has had that problem. <laughs> Brother no, no, Stephen, maybe you know. Some of you other parents probably know. Sister Nett, you never had that problem, did you? <laughs> Some of those grandchildren, they don't do the same thing. You talk to them. They'll shake their head. You know, whichever way you tell them to shake it. They'll walk off and still carry on about their business like nothing else went wrong. That's you know, right. And I heard my wife and I both, we said, did I tell you? What? <laughs> no, I thought you meant something else. You know, they don't know how to comprehend that this morning. That's all right. Come on. Amen. And that's okay in some cases. But can I tell you, there's some under the sound of my voice, God's spoken to us time and time and time again. Amen. We're shaking our heads. And we're nodding that's at you right. the way we need to nod. Yes, no. But we carry on in life like we yes. never right. understood. Like we've never heard it again. Like it didn't even, it, it, like somebody just telling us some fancy story. Amen. Help us, Holy Ghost, this morning. Amen. Is this all right today? Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the sad portion of this scripture is they understood none. They didn't comprehend these things. They didn't, it didn't hit home. It didn't even startle them the most. Amen. At any point in time. This saying which was hid from them. Oh, God didn't want to reveal it to him. No, he spoke it very plainly time and time again. And just like some of us, all they understood was the good. And they threw out all the bad. They didn't want to hear that. <laughs> Tell me again. <laughs> you ever went to an interview and the boss man tells you all these things? He don't ever tell you the hours that you're actually going to have to work to make that <laughs> They don't tell you all of the things that you're really going to have to endure, amen, to get that uh, benefit package they were talking about. You know, all you hear is, oh, yeah, get paid vacation. All right. Amen. I get all this uh, for my time here, but wonderful. It takes about a few weeks or months for it all to settle in, and you're like, oh, they didn't tell me this, and they didn't say that. Amen. Now, what you probably did not understand was you were just listening to all of the good, and you didn't recognize any of the bad. You weren't even aware. You were oblivious to the facts. And so sad this morning that many of us in our soul's condition, we've come to service after service time and time again. Brother Tosh, we've heard the stories of scriptures, but we leave the same way. Why? Because we understood none of these things. Amen. We didn't understand it. We didn't ask. Amen. I was always told, if you want to make sure you're doing a good job, it's better to ask again. Amen. I'd rather look foolish than disobedient. You don't understand what the point is? Amen. I'd rather know I got the answer right. Amen. The first time than have to keep going back. Amen. Help us Holy Ghost this morning. The reality is this. Isaiah in chapter number 53, we've heard this story or this scripture many times, but I want you to understand what it simply says. Verse number one, who hath believed our report? Who hath believed it? He said, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Now it goes on and it begins to talk about Christ. For he shall grow up, and before him is a tender plant and a root out of dry grass. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we 
shall see Him, there is no beauty that we should be desire Him. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We hid, as it were, our faces from Him. He was despised and we esteemed Him not. Surely He had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem Him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon Him. And with His stripes we are healed. He said, all oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to His own way. And the Lord hath laid on Him the iniquity of us all. Right. And we've heard those portions of Scripture so many times, but Isaiah's first quote, if you will, first statement is very simple. Who hath believed it? Uh -huh. It's not who has heard it. It's not who has seen it before. It's not only the ones that have heard that story. He said, who hath believed? There's a significant difference between hearing and believing. There's a difference between hearing and understanding. That's right. Amen. <laughs> I'm not going to go into details of my conversations my wife and I have, but there are times where she's hearing, but I don't think she understands. <laughs> and vice versa, you know, vice versa. I'm guilty, I guess, of the same thing. But then in case of most of us men, we know the answer beforehand anyway, so we, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't need her to tell us no way. You know how it goes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister John. Amen. It's the truth nonetheless. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But the reality is that's the way we communicate with each other. It's not unlike how we communicate with God, how He tries to communicate with us. Right. Very telling portion of Scripture is on the road to a maze in Luke chapter, I believe it's Luke chapter 19. I'll be verse, could be chapter 21. Amen. Luke, amen. And the road to Emmaus, this gentleman after the resurrection, he's been there, were walking and talking about the things concerning that had transpired after the death of Christ. Amen. They were talking about all that had taken place and how all these things were rumored. Amen. They were just discussing all that had happened. And this man came walking on the journey with them, came up to them where they were. Amen. They did not know it was Christ. Amen. They didn't know it was Him. Amen. After He had been resurrected, walking with Him. I don't know how they couldn't comprehend it. Amen. We oftentimes vision that Sister Ned as a shadowy figure. Amen. Someone wearing a cloak over his head. Maybe they didn't see his face clearly. Maybe they didn't see him plainly. But for whatever reason, amen. Here was Christ walking with them. Amen. Asking them what they spoke of. And they even looked said, sir, do you not know what all has taken place? There was a big trial. There was this uh, man who claimed to be the Son of God. They go in all of these details and they talk about it to him. What had transpired and been put to death. Amen. And the Bible says that Christ began. Amen. And the prophets talking to them began in the Old Testament. Amen. Speaking to them things concerning himself. Amen. And as they journeyed on the way, they listened and tended to everything he had to say. Amen. And when they began to expound to them the scriptures, and they began to talk to them, even they wanted him to come in and eat, and they wanted to sit down and fellowship with him. Amen. So he, 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 he went with them and was there, and they said when he took the bread and he broke it and blessed it, amen, was out of their, uh, was taken from their midst. Then they comprehended that this was Christ, and they were kind when he walked on them on the journey, even how. Strong desire. 
Amen. Just to sit there and listen to what he had to say. There was a hunger. Amen. There was a difference made. It wasn't just a story. Amen. I'm trying to close with these words. Amen. The book of John gives us a very clear indication as well. To understand is not just to comprehend, but to understand something is to grasp fully, I believe. God. Not just hear the highlights, not just catch a portion of it, Come on. but to take Come on. hold to it. Amen. Amen. To take hold to it, to really, amen, have a firm grasp. If you were to go visit a doctor this morning, you wouldn't want somebody just graduated. Medical school. I was told by a friend of ours, she was talking about uh, this massage therapy. You know, there was a, a school in Jacksonville. Amen. And she said that you could go to some of these uh, beginners, if you will, chiropractic beginners, massage therapists. They have a school for them and they'll give you free, kind of like the haircut people, I guess the same deal. They'll let you have a free haircut if you let them guinea pig on you. <laughs> So, you know, that's just kind of the deal. They'll do the same thing with massage therapy. You kind of get a discounted rate, or maybe it's even free. I don't know. I've never been. Probably won't ever go. So that's just how the reality is. And they go, and they, they're there, and these people are trying to help them, and they're learning the task. But if you really have an issue, maybe your back's really out of whack, you want to go to somebody that really grasps what they're doing. Come on. You want to go to an expert. You don't want somebody just twisting your neck, taking right. a Jackie Chan or something. You know, you could be in trouble. Uh -huh. Man, you might not walk for the rest of your life. That's just the reality. Somebody not knowing what they're doing is dangerous. Right. Yes. And the point I'm getting to is this. Man, you want somebody that understands, that really grasps and gets hold. And what I believe more than anything is God's asking you this morning and me, do we understand? Amen. Do we grasp it? Do we really have hold to what He's Amen. speaking to us? Is it just a story we've heard before? Is this something we've listened to one time when we were a child? Is this something our parents have taught us over the years? Maybe we've been to Sunday school when we were a child and even our Sunday school teacher talked about this. We've heard that. But what God is simply wanting to know is what He spoke to us in John chapter number 1. He was in the world and the world was made by Him and the world knew Him not. They didn't know it. They have a clue. As Isaiah said, he came to his own and his own received him not. He was despised, rejected. Even they didn't want him. But, he said, as many as received him. As many as gladly understood this was the Christ. This is him who all the prophets had spoken about. He said, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Amen. Is anybody hear what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. But do you understand? Come on. Amen. Stay with me all over the house. I told somebody just the other day, we're not a typical, not a typical person in some regards. I guess that's a good thing and a bad thing sometimes. Amen. My wife, we're trying to get songs together for church. We are limited by what we know and what we can learn really quickly or try to learn really quickly. And if we don't have the words or the uh, the keys and chords, we're not going to make any impact. You've seen that Sunday night, all right? It was, it was pretty rough on that particular one song. She made a comment to me. She said, we got to have a song about the resurrection. <laughs> we got to have a song about the resurrection this morning. Amen. And that's what some came to hear about and come and spend time with family. And I'm so glad you chose to come to the house of the Lord. I appreciate you being here. But more importantly, I want you to go, amen, along your journey, understanding. Amen. Really grasping what God is saying. Hey, God. I want you to leave this morning, not just hearing about the celebrated Christ that most Christians believe in, but I want you to know that He is a risen. Amen. And I want it to be a reality for you. How is that a reality, Brother Mitchell, for me? He said, as many as received Him, 
to them He gave power to become the sons of God. As many as believed upon His name, as many as have turned to Him. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed, if you would, this morning. Amen. I know this is typical of some services you've been to. And that may be the case. I don't want to embarrass anyone, and I know you've heard these stories before, you've heard that. But I simply wanted you to know today, amen, it's not a fairy tale. It's not a made-up idea. It's not something we just set aside for having another holiday. But for the men and women this morning that have found Him, men and women that have even been found by Him in our lives, we understand today that this is the day, amen, that our Savior conquered death, hell, and the grave. Amen. He overcame he overcame it. We might have life and have it more abundantly. How do we have that life? By first trusting in Him. By first turning to Him with our hearts and our lives. Brother, Brother Mitchell, everything in my life isn't great. There's some problems. I've got some situations that need to be worked out. Amen. He didn't say He'd come to Him perfect. He said, come to me all you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Amen. Upon Him was laid the iniquity of us all. Upon Him he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Amen. Isaiah is calling out this morning saying, Do you believe my report? I know you've heard it. I know those scriptures have been repeated time and time again, but do you believe it? Do you understand it today? I'm going to ask you a very simple thing. Amen. You'll find you a place to pray this morning. I'm not going to ask no one to raise their hands. I'm not going to ask you to be singled out, feel uncomfortable, but if you would, amen, everyone that can find you a place to pray. If you feel comfortable right where you are, pray, that's fine. Those that would like to join in these altars are open for you to come. Amen. Ask God to help our families have an understanding. Help us have a better understanding. Help us to have a better grasp of what He's spoken. Don't let it be just another story. Don't let it be just another example or something we've heard before. But let it be the reality of our lives. We serve a God. Amen. Alive and well. And working in the hearts and lives of men. And women today, and those that would, would you come? With these that are coming, amen, would you find you a place to pray? And let the Lord help us this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for your grace. We thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. Thank you, Jesus, for your power, your strength. Thank you, 